In this video, you're gonna get an inside scoop on what the day-to-day -day life is like working in tech sales. And you wanna make sure you watch this video all the way through because if you're someone who is thinking about working in tech sales or software sales, and you're not really sure what the day-to-day -day life looks like and what the job entails, well, I'm gonna be sharing my personal experiences working in tech sales in Silicon Valley, at Oracle, and later at a startup so you get a holistic picture on what the job actually is. What's going on, everybody? Patrick Dink here. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe because it's free and turn on notifications. And if you're ready to start and accelerate your sales career, check out my sales masterclass, Sales Legacy. Link is in the description or go to saleslegacy.com and let's go ahead and get started. So to start things off, let's go ahead and take a look at what it's like to work in the early mornings in sales. So when you're doing tech sales, especially if you are just starting out, chances are you're gonna be doing a lot of sales prospecting meaning it's a lot of cold emailing, cold calling, adding and connecting with people on LinkedIn. And your only goal is really just to, you know, generate a meeting with a potential customer. So I remember back when I was at Oracle and we were doing a lot of cold calling at the time, I would have to wake up early and, you know, drive to work. And because I lived in San Francisco, but then the office of Oracle headquarters was actually in Redwood City, which is, you know, in Silicon Valley. So it's a little bit further down South, maybe like a 40 minute drive with traffic. And then I uh, pick up a coffee on the way to work and then try to get to the office around 8 a.m. And when I usually actually got a little bit earlier than 8 a.m. so that I can, you know, get settled in, get my script ready and get ready. And then from there, it's kind of like you're just, you know, dialing numbers, you know, from eight to as many hours as you can go um, until lunch, right? And so when it comes to that day-to-day -day life, it's kind of, you know, in some ways it's fun and exciting in that you're trying to, you know, sell to a complete stranger. But on the other end, you know, there's this part of you that feels kind of hurt because it's like you deal with a lot of rejection. Um, a lot of people aren't that nice to you. And it, sometimes it feels like you're bothering them in some ways. And so there, there's pros and cons, right? Sometimes people are very receptive when it comes to the phone. Sometimes, you know, you just catch someone at the bad time and they just don't have the right attitude. But um, when it comes to um, how I feel about that, it's just kind of like, that's part of the game, right? Some people are going to be positive. Some people are going to be negative. And that's totally okay because when you do your best and you have the best strategy, you just have to keep dialing the numbers and run the numbers. And then you're going to be able to get the right information you need and book the meetings that you want. Now, there's also different ways of prospecting, right? So some companies, they do a lot of cold calling. Other companies do a lot of cold emailing. Like later on in my career, when I joined a startup, I did a lot of cold emailing and we didn't even cold call um, at all during that time when I was working at this specific startup because we found that if we can send a bunch of emails, like hundreds every day, it was much more effective for what we were doing at the time because there weren't really like specific accounts we were going for. We're just, you know, having ideas of, oh, we should hit this industry. We should try this industry. It was trying to go as fast as possible. And so so cold emailing is a different game where it's more about your ability to write emails. So it's like copywriting and understanding how to sell within, you know, text of an email and learning all the different tools of how to, you know, find the prospects on LinkedIn, get their email address, put it in the CRM and how to schedule the emails, when to schedule the emails and, you know, how to increase your conversion rates, right? So it's almost like a marketing job in a sense where it's all about the cold email. And that's also fun as well. Obviously you don't really face any rejection because it's like, if somebody says no through an email, you don't really care, you're not on the phone with them. And so because of that, you know, it makes the job a lot more easier in terms of your emotional stability. And then, you know, if they book a meeting, you get on the phone and you try to sell them, right? So um, the day-to-day -day life in tech sales, it's gonna vary from company to company. So you definitely wanna ask uh, the recruiter or the hiring manager, like, okay, how do you generate leads? Is it cold emailing, um, cold calling, or whatever it is, right? Because you wanna make sure whatever method they use, that you are comfortable doing that or comfortable learning it um, if you don't have that much sales experience because it definitely does play a huge role in terms of what the day-to-day -day life is like. Now that we kind of cover like the core responsibility when you're working in sales, especially if you're doing sales prospecting, let's go ahead and talk about sales meetings, right? And I'm talking about internal sales meetings. So obviously you're gonna have meetings with potential customers, you're gonna try to sell them, but you may not understand that you're gonna have a lot of internal meetings within your company because, you know, every company, there's gonna be some type of company politics. You have to, you know, make sure you build your relationship with people internally so that they can help you out. So for a sales meeting, you know, from my experience working in sales in San Francisco, in Silicon Valley, it's kind of like you know once a week or sometimes it's more depending on the situation we got all get in the room the whole sales team gets there and then you know whoever's the sales manager will kind of lead the meeting and they will say okay guys so you know what did everyone do this weekend right <laughs> you know it's literally like that it's, it's kind of corporate in the sense but people just go around the table and be like oh yeah i went fishing oh yeah i rode my bike whatever okay 
Then they get into the actual sales and they look at the numbers. They look, okay guys, so you know, based on these numbers, it looks like we're sending a lot of emails, but we're not getting a lot of responses. Why is that? And as a team, we try to figure out, okay, you know, this template is working, this template's not working. Why did that template work and how can we replicate it for the other reps? And so it's kind of like a collaborative effort, right? So when you're joining a sales team at an organization, it shouldn't be you figuring out everything from you know, the emails and cold calling and, you know, you shouldn't be doing it by yourself. If you are, it's unfortunate because that's a, you know, it's just a sales team that's not very structured and, um, you know, cooperative in a sense. But, you know, usually they will try to teach you, they'll try to show you what works and what doesn't. And if you're making any type of mistakes, they'll be like, okay, I see your cold emails. I see your cold calls. We have the recordings. I think you can improve on these things. And and let's go ahead and practice a little bit. And then next time you get, you start prospecting again, we can work on that together. And one very important thing is that it's very important to make friends and allies within your company internally. And the reason is because um, when you are selling technology and software, it's a very technical thing, right? So if you, let's say, are a sales development rep and then you get advanced into being an account executive, which is someone who has to close deals, every conversation, you know, is gonna be a little different. Some are gonna be more high level where it's not super technical and you can kind of talk high level on what you do and how you bring value. But then as you get closer to closing a deal, uh, usually the customer is like, okay, I wanna bring my engineer on so we can talk about technically how are we going to you know, make this work with what we already have. And so the reason why you wanna have allies is because you need to work with different people like sales engineers is a very important one in tech sales because these are people who are kind of like salespeople um, but they're not really paid a commission. Maybe they're paid on bonus. Oh, it depends on the company. They're not like the quarterback of the deal. They're only brought in when the conversation gets extremely technical. Or sometimes you might even just get an engineer and have them on the call even though they're not you know, that sales focused. And so these type of people are kind of selling your product and service for you um, from a technical perspective. And they're trying to say like, hey, you know, our technology is good. It's gonna work with your technology. There's nothing to worry about. And as a account executive, right, which is what I was, you have to build these relationships so that whenever you have a deal coming up or a meeting coming up, you can kind of pull those resources and bring them in and they will be happy to help you. So it's very important, whether you work at a small company or a large company, that you build allies the people that can really help you out when it comes to those technical software and technology deals. And next, let's talk about the pace and environment, right? So in tech sales, in my opinion, um, it's quite fast relative to other industries. Like I worked in fashion industry before, I worked at a production company and a marketing company, and I gotta say technology um, is a lot faster moving, right? Because, well, it depends. When you work at a startup, it's a lot faster because they're trying to figure out product market fit, they're trying to get through as many people as possible, have as many meetings as possible, get those data points to see what works and what doesn't, and they can improve and iterate. Now, if you're working at, let's say, an Oracle or Salesforce or Microsoft, it's a little bit slower, uh, especially if you're doing enterprise, which is what I was doing when I was working at Oracle, where you know it's not about high velocity, it's more about high touch, and that you just wanna build a proper relationship with certain accounts because you only need to close a few deals a year to, you know, to do well um, when you're doing enterprise, right? So, Depends on the company you're working for, depends on who you are selling it to, but generally startups are way faster compared to everything else. And then more enterprise is, is slower relative to startups, but then it doesn't mean it's more easier. It's, it's a lot more work, but in a different way. There's a lot more approvals and paperwork and things like that versus startup where it's just like, go, 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 go. So um, if you're deciding like which company you wanna work at, you wanna ask the, you know, the person who is interviewing you, like, you know, what is it like to work here? What's the pace? Is it slower? Is it faster? Are you guys still looking for product market fit or you have the fit? And you know, you try to get a feel of how it works. So it depends. But generally, technology is a lot more faster than, let's say, other industries that I've personally been in myself. And the next thing we're gonna talk about in tech sales is company politics. Now, you know, company politics is going to exist in any industry, uh, no matter if it's a startup, enterprise company, they're always, you know, company culture, right? And so when it comes to the politics, it's kind of like, if you're a sales rep working at a large company and you wanna keep advancing up the ladder and you know get a higher position, well, you have to play the politics game in that people have to know who you are, right? Your manager needs to like you, um, other managers need to like you, um, the managers, you know, the director needs to like you, and hopefully if you have a relationship with the vice president, they need to like you as well because, you know, when certain spots open up within a company, they're gonna look at, okay, who do we have currently working for us that deserves this spot? If you play the politics game correctly, well, they're always going to think of you when it's time to, you know, give someone a promotion or give them a better territory, right, or give them a pay raise. And so you can't escape it. You know, technology, just like every other industry, there may be 
company politics. It may be better than other industries, but there's still gonna be those politics that exist. So what I did when I was at Oracle is I made sure that you know everyone above me, like my manager and director and things like that, they knew who I was, they knew I was hardworking, and they knew that I was getting results. On top of that, whenever there are any opportunities to mentor or teach any other of the new sales hires, I would always volunteer, right? And I would spend hours and hours and hours teaching other people what I knew so that they can get up to speed. And that's actually how I started uh, doing sales training by just training my peers and people who just joined the company um, at Oracle. And I did it completely for free. And the reason was because number one, I love to help people and I love to inspire. And number two, there's the politics game where, you know, the more you help other people, you know, it's kind of like karma, it comes back around and, you know, you get the rewards definitely. So if you're someone that doesn't really like the company politics game, that's unfortunate because you're gonna have to play it anyways, right? Unless you're just a super, superstar and they just leave you alone. But chances are, if you're working at like a big name, like a Oracle or Microsoft, you definitely have to uh, build those relationships internally to continue to advance in your career. And so with that said, that is pretty much what it's kind of like to work in technology sales and SaaS sales. If you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe because it's absolutely free to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And if you wanna take your sales game to the next level, maybe start and accelerate your sales career, check out my masterclass, Sales Legacy. Link is in the description. And if you wanna join the masterclass, uh, we actually have a free one hour training for you to get an idea of you know, what it is and get a taste of it to see if it's right for you. So if you're looking to do that, check out the link in the description for Sales Legacy. And with that said, my name is Patrick Dang and I'll see you guys in the next one.